continue on that journey, we are now joined on the desk by Wale Shonibari, is Managing Director of Investment Banking at uh, United Capital. Thank you come, for coming through, Wale. So Hello. we're putting one question to everybody that we're bringing through, that we're speaking to on the phone via Skype, etc., etc. Your expectations in terms of the entry of the men who will be at Asorok post May 29. Yeah, I expect the new government to carry on along more or less the same trajectory. The idea is to try and sustain high level growth. I mean, ideally, we want to be growing at in, uh, 7, 8 percent, even double digits if we can afford it. But in order to do that, there has to be significant investment in infrastructure, and we need the reforms to continue. Mm. So a continuation of the reforms, and yet when you look at the political manifestos of the two parties actually, there does not seem to be a major difference in terms of uh, their expectations and their economic policies. Mm -hmm. Is there any between them that you would worry if they came in that they would change things to such a degree that the continuity that you're looking for might not be there? You're, you're right, Godfrey. There isn't much difference. This election appears to have been fought more along uh, the issues of corruption and security in the country, but in terms of the actual reforms required for mm. us to achieve uh, sustained high-level growth, yeah. there doesn't appear to be much difference uh, in terms of uh, the approaches of, of both uh, governments or, or both uh, parties. Yeah. Is there something that is missing that you would like to be there, that you have not heard, that you desperately, desperately would have wanted to be on the election manifestos or in the messages that the parties have been giving out? It's absolutely critical that we push the reform process. There hasn't been much detailed discussion yeah. around what sort of reform is I needed. have to say, I have and, to say, I agree uh, with you. We have the uh, petroleum industry bill that's pending. We have the transportation bill that's also pending. Before you can get private sector involved in railways, you have to repeal the NRC Act. Yeah. And we have other, like the roads bill is also pending. So I would have expected more discussions. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, there's the NHIS bill that's also pending. Mm -hmm. So there's few things that are sitting outside that you'd have wanted to see. You want to come in on that quickly? No, no, I just say that, well, you talk about the entry, that's certainly full enough from what yeah. you said. <laughs> <laughs> and it needs to be fuller still. I've got a list of uh, some of the things that the APC says it will do. But before I'm, I'm accused of supporting the APC and saying uh, what the election manifesto speaks about, let's get another voice out of business. We're joined now by Victor Politis, his chairman of uh, Project Capital. Victor, so we've been putting out a stock question to all the via, uh, gentlemen and ladies that we've been speaking to on the channel today about the expectations out of this presidential election. Where do you sit? Um, <clears throat> well, there are easy things to accomplish provided that uh, whoever is willing to go beyond lip service. And there's been a lot of lip service and that's why I don't touch on the macroeconomic items which require huge political will. But uh, the the private sector in Nigeria during the 10 years of my experience has achieved growth in spite of uh, slow reforms, in spite of energy problems. We've developed projects that are very energy intensive and have been very successful um, and attracted financing. So I would like to focus primarily, I would like to see the next government do things that are relatively easy to do. Uh, such as emphasis on vocational education, which is a critical aspect of creating local content, which Nigeria needs desperately um, and can benefit from very quickly without going through master's degrees at the university level, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Vocational education is a huge subject. Mm. Um, as a result, does it matter to you who is sitting in Asa Rock? Uh, the truth is that um, I don't see very much of a difference at the end of the day because mm. uh, you know, I don't see much of a difference. W who am I to say? I'm not a voter, so I don't have the right <laughs> to, actually, to, to actually say who I think would be better because, honestly, I don't know. But you asked me a question that is very general, and from my experience, I'm saying uh, vocational education, taught local content, Mm -hmm. and advancing the, mm -hmm. the import substitution, especially in the food sector, where Nigeria, believe it or not, is a size of India, because it imports 80% mm -hmm. of everything it eats, whereas India, with a billion two, imports only 10% of what it eats. So 
So that's disastrous stuff that is very, very simple to address, even if you take forever to do your reforms. Uh, because uh, yeah. uh, there you, you need bright ministers who are focused not so much on, on useless activities, but on, uh, um, on, on very specific initiatives that the private sector can help them implement. Mm. So political will is going to be a key consideration post this election. Uh, for this, from your side, when you hear this issue around political will, do you worry that whoever comes in, the, the, the challenges are so huge. I mean, we were talking about the intra and how big it's grown mm. in the discussions that we've been having, mm. that it just kills any idea of uh, innovation and initiative that's different from doing the norm and just trying to fix what is already there. Mm. It, it's, a, it's a case of having what I like to describe as a key value proposition. Mm. What is it that I would focus on as, uh, as the head of state that everybody else has got to conform to? Uh, what is it that I'm going to try and see how the whole country focuses on? Uh, it's about alignment. So I believe that uh, if we can get, uh, if, the, if the head of state can focus and say, you know what, this is the main thing that I'm going to be pushing on and I need everybody to align with this, then yeah. I think we begin to make some kind of progress. And I want to touch very briefly on what was mentioned about vocational skills. Yeah. I think it is so very important because uh, this country uh, when we talk about building this country, it's really brick by brick, literally with our hands. Mm. And unless we can get people who are ready to use their hands mm. to build those houses and those bridges and those roads and those window panes and everything that's required, yeah. we really won't make much progress. And Absolutely. I think that's how we also create jobs as well and develop skills. Yeah. And one of the but points you made it, is that it, uh, it, this country it, is growing it, yeah, despite yeah. the yeah. politics. Do you want, yeah. me, 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 do you want yeah, to come in very quickly? Uh, who me, Victor? Okay, I I don't okay. know who you're so Victor, with. So I Victor, think, uh, Victor, I Victor think is saying something. Victor is saying something. So here is uh, yeah, we Victor. have we are now joined by MASIA Law, his country manager for Nigeria, the IFC, to discuss job creation and infrastructure. So. Um, I said, so, so one of the issues we've been tackling is the whole issue of uh, trying to find jobs. I saw the APC is talking about creating a million jobs in the first year when it comes into power. Then I saw in another platform that they were talking about 740,000 jobs. On another platform still, I think it was the election manifesto, they are talking about 3 million jobs. So I'm confused about how many jobs they will create anyway. But in terms of the ideas that are required to create jobs in Nigeria, do you get any sense out of uh, the noises we've been hearing out of the political parties that these guys are coming with uh, very specific proposals that will drive job creation uh, in this country. Well, I have to say that it is promising that um, you do have jobs as a as a cornerstone of of the manifestos of both parties. So it's it's a, it's a critical issue, and it's very encouraging that both of the of the leading parties are really focusing on the job creation issue because the the real problem for us in Nigeria has been we have had job less growth so the the idea of continuing our pattern of growth without growing our job base is not something that we want to see in the future mm. so 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 the key the key the key focus for both of them is that jobs is, are important but how they will actually do that i think the devil is in the details mm. Are you encouraged by the messages that they've been coming through that they've got the right ideas in terms of creating jobs? Well, I mean, both parties have been making the right sort of noises. It's the noises, right? Yeah, I mean, we're not short of <laughs> ideas in this country. We no, have a lot no. of ideas, but um, it's all about implement implementation. Yeah. And we need to do it fast because yeah. the rest of the world is not waiting. So yeah. um, we need to drive the reforms and people need to believe in it. Yeah. And then of course uh, at the IFC your job is to provide technical advice as well as advice on how this can be done. What would you say to the next president of Nigeria if they were sitting here and studio? Okay, just pretend it's me. I'm the next president of Nigeria. What should uh, be on my in plate? I would focus on, on three major sort of policy initiatives. I think the first would be on, on introducing some way to introduce um, improved agricultural productivity. The reality is that 80% of the employed population 
in Nigeria is in agriculture. Um, that is where most people are employed. Um, and so there's a real opportunity there to, if we, if we improve agricultural productivity, we can actually um, improve the quality of jobs um, in Nigeria. The second thing I would offer up as a suggestion is, is a more spatially balanced investment. The reality in Nigeria is that we have quite a bit of spatial inequality, whether it's rural, urban, or north-south. Um, there's a real problem there. And if you look at sort of the pattern of growth in Nigeria, it is, it is quite stark if, if you look at that. So really trying to focus investment where investment has lacked in the past. Yeah. And then finally, and probably most importantly, I'd, I'd suggest that a much more deliberate focus on lowering the cost of doing business. Nigeria today um, ranks 170 out of 109 countries in terms of ease of doing business. Um, registration issues, um, access to affordable energy, there are a whole host of, of of components of this that really make Nigeria today yeah. still there's still a lot to be done on, on that regard and if you can improve the cost of doing business that improves the environment for SMEs and SMEs as we all know um, they are the biggest job creators yeah. so, so I would really focus the the policy initiatives along those lines yeah I couldn't agree with you more I'm mourning every time I try and go and buy food here in Lagos because when I compare with Johannesburg for instance it's a huge difference and I can speak uh, with absolute freedom Let's go back to, uh, to, to, to Victor. Victor, you wanted to make another point. Is it around job creation? Well, yes, I think that uh, I disagree entirely with uh, some of the uh, macro statements because at the end of the day, uh, Nigeria today uh, needs large projects that will create SME uh, subcontractors. The SME sector uh, has failed across the board. Um, and has not provided to the major players, the major manufacturers who are mostly multinationals, the kind of local content they need. So it's good for IFC to say that, but frankly speaking, you know, when we developed the aluminum can factory, which is now into its third plant, uh, there was no power, um, they were, uh, right. there was no raw material, there were many things that did not exist, but look at how many people are now serving that those two plants in 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 Ogun State and Naba. And the same applies to all large projects. Large, large import substitution projects are much easier to develop than to focus on the SME northern states that investors will just not go to in the near term. They may go in two years' yeah. time, but they won't go in the near term. So we have to be practical about what we expect. And it may not be, mm -hmm. it's complicated enough to, to be the president surrounded by many people who are not always very competent. Um, uh, it's another thing to be on a state level and accomplish large projects, large substitution projects that create jobs and create mm -hmm. SME involvement as subcontractors and create badly needed yeah. local content. Think, uh, uh, think yeah. uh, uh, microeconomics. We're not the World Bank. It's not working. Microeconomics. What will work <laughs> for the country where it stands today? Yeah. Interesting contrasting ideas coming there through. Felicia, if I can come to you. I mean, SMM is this World Bank studies, he says we're not the World Bank, but World Bank studies have shown that your biggest uh, job creator uh, in economies as proven as the U.S. and others is your SMME sector. But he also brings in the point about the importance of uh, the big projects that also mm -hmm. create opportunities for the SMME sector. And I know you probably also want to come in and contribute mm -hmm. to that. Are we obsessed with these big uh, value projects, your $9 billion Dangote uh, refinery projects to, at the expense of the smaller projects? Projects, the way the small guy at the bottom creates two or three jobs and the process is replicated across many other thousands? Yeah, for, for example, uh, I, I know that the minister, Minister Aganga, when he started the auto industrial revolution uh, project that he had, yeah. uh, the basic thing that was driving it was the fact that if you have an auto plant, you've got probably thousands of other organizations that are in the value chain that are providing different components. Uh, into this central plant for it to be assembled. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea from a technology development point of view was to see how can we create these huge, huge 
plants yeah. or these huge projects yeah. that in principle creates an opportunity for others to feed into mm -hmm. into it and that's the principle but the point is you've got to be patient like everything else because these uh, or these SMEs that are supposed to be suppliers into that chain yeah. they too have to grow mm -hmm. they too have to go have to go through a learning process yeah. for them to be able to be useful yeah but the yeah. concept is that and I won't can understand it but we're yeah. in, a, in a hurry yeah but of course uh, Dangote is, is uh, the, 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 the tomorrow's Dangote is being born today yeah well, you want to you want to come in quickly? Yeah, just saying that Nigeria currently spends about ten billion dollars uh, a year on infrastructure, and um, to, for us to get the kind of growth we need, we need to be spending between eighteen billion to twenty three billion dollars a year on infrastructure. So there's room for those big projects because we need them to drive economic growth. Yeah. At the same time, we know that the largest employers of labor are the SMEs, mm -hmm. if you look at Germany and other places. So yeah. for me, it's not mutually exclusive. You, we, we need to do both. Absolutely. Uh, Emmett, do you want to, 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 to post a response to any of those uh, comments? No, I, I just would reiterate uh, Wale's point. It, it really isn't a mutually exclusive agenda. Um, it is not. Yeah. It, it re you really do have to pursue these sort of mega projects, but not at the expense of focusing on really what is going to create jobs in the next few years. Mm -hmm. um, from, from our perspective, the energy sector is key. Addressing the energy sector, bringing down the cost of doing business from the energy side is actually, we think, going to be um, a big boost to the economy and, and, and offer up... Um, an opportunity for small businesses, medium-sized, and large businesses mm. to then be to be employers. So, again, I would agree, not mutually exclusive. But again, you know, governments ha have they have to prioritize. Yeah. The question is, what are they going to focus on on the first 100 days um, to really push forward? And they're going to have to make some tough decisions. Absolutely, and we're going to try and measure them on that 100 days post May 29. M A S N Law, Country Manager at IFC in Nigeria. Thank you for joining us, Victor Politis, Chairman Project Capital. Also. So thank you for joining us. And uh, in studio here, I had Felicia Phillips, uh, Chairman NESG, who also joined us.